I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Hello and welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James. I get the honor of bringing to you amazing women, women that inspire me, women that are change makers, women that have stepped out into the world in their passion. That's exciting to me because we get to show you that there's possibility for us all to be the best that we can be. So this podcast comes to you every week. You can get us on Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, Spreaker, Amazon, YouTube, just subscribe (laughs) and then come back every week and meet somebody fabulous. So I have a new friend that I am going to introduce you to today. Her name is Lisa J. Marshall. She's a graduate from Bennington College. She's She's certified by the International Coaching Federation, and she's received additional certification in conversation-based assessment, syntax communication modeling, new fields, ontological coaching, and William Bridges transition management. And prior to entering the business world, she spent 12 years working as a documentary filmmaker. It is from that background that her fascination with story and its power to transform real lives took hold. Lisa is nationally recognized as an expert, a trainer, a speaker on leadership, maturity, and organizational development. And she is president of her executive coaching firm, The Smart Work Company. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, I'm thrilled to know about you, but I want to start where I start with most of our guests. It's like, where, how did you grow up? Where were you born? You know, because I'm sure you didn't come on the planet going, you know, I'm going to be a leadership expert. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, in the 1950s. It was an extremely conservative town where if you were female and you went downtown, you put on white gloves. Yeah, um, people don't remember that, but it it was in my lifetime. Um, And um, my parents were unusual uh, in a lot of ways. They were very independent-minded people who uh, made very conscious choices about how they lived their lives. Um, And that was hard on my sisters who wanted to fit in more. Uh, I was pretty comfortable with it because I sort of have that same, don't tell me what to think. I want to figure it out for myself mentality. Uh, And I, um, I was part of the civil rights movement back in the day. That seems like so long ago, so heartbreakingly. Um, and I lived communally for a number of years, and then I reconnected with a friend from high school, and we settled down and had kids, and at some point, the filmmaking wasn't a family-friendly way to go. So I looked for something else. And I had worked in a lot of educational films and with a lot of trainers. And I got interested in training and um, met somebody who was very specifically training technical people in interpersonal skills. Now, this is the early 1980s, long before we had the conversations we have about techies today. And that was a hard sell initially, but then they started firing middle managers in corporate America and the technical minds all then had to figure out how to work on teams, how to sell their own ideas to top management, et cetera, et cetera. And suddenly there was a great need for what we were doing. What I realized, however, is that you can't, train people 
in interpersonal skills the way you train people in running a widget machine. Right. It, it, you, you, they need practice. They need accountability. They need support. It's a much more subtle process. And we started offering supporting coaching for the people who'd gone through our programs. And at some point, I just thought, I don't want to do the training anymore. You know, training is a very interesting game because guess who gets evaluated? The <laughs> trainer. Right. nobody's held accountable for doing anything in the training world except the trainer I didn't like that game um so I went off on my own and and started my own coaching company um and well I love good. that is that so where did first of all where did yin um and spurt leadership come in and what is yin leadership okay good questions my book is called Yin, Completing the Leadership Journey. That's because I'd written an earlier book about leadership called Speak the Truth and Point to Hope, The Leader's Journey to Maturity. And that was because my coaching had worked well enough that most of the people I coached got promoted and then they got promoted and then they got promoted and then they couldn't be technical anymore. They had to be leadership. And that was such a game changer for guys who really love technical stuff mm -hmm. that I, I had to really think about and figure out how to articulate what's expected of them now. And for me, real leadership is about stepping up and taking responsibility, which is to say, being a grown up. Um, and in, when was that? In the early 2000s, one of my teachers, a gentleman named Hayemio Storm, who wrote a very well-known book called Seven Arrows, he's um, Native American, and he read Speak the Truth and Point to Hope and said, this is a good book, Lisa, but you need to write a book about leadership for women. Well, I thought I'd written a book about leadership for everybody. So it took me a long time. But somehow with the convergence of Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, the pandemic, my, I was having a knee replacement. Somewhere in that, I suddenly realized what I hadn't said and needed to say. And that's that we're desperately out of balance. We have a culture that promotes mm. young, that is, and I should back up a second, yin and yang are terms that come from Asia that refer to energies, qualities of energies, masculine qualities of energies is yang, yin is feminine qualities of energy. It doesn't mean people, it just means the kinds of energies we have. And in the capitalist global economy, Young energy is what gets privileged all the time. It mm -hmm. is what gets honored. It's what gets respected. Uh, and yin energy has no space. Mm -hmm. There's no room for it to breathe in this, in this economy. Um, and it's why things are so out of balance. It's why the planet is, is out of balance. And it's why people's lives are out of balance. And it's why human beings are struggling so deeply at this point. Yeah. We all need a balance. We can't just be all yin. Hardly anybody is. We can't be just all young. A lot of people are. Right. We need to have those two things in balance. Yeah, well, this That's is so what I finally saw when all those things sort of converged in my mind. Well, I love what you're talking about because I have discovered and have been discovering that this is a time where women are emerging. They're feeling calls, they're feeling needs and desires to step forward. They don't necessarily know how to step into that yin energy, but they know that there's something pulling them. And so um, I want to talk about the fact that what, what is, um, what's a flower soldier? What's a flower soldier? Flower soldier is a work that comes 
a, a phrase that comes from Hayemio Storm's work. Um, in the belief systems of the people who've been in on this continent the longest, um, there was a concept of a, a deep and rigorous training that took place in something called temple schools in the Mayan tradition. And the, the highest level of development in that tradition were people who understood war and understood it so well they knew how to avoid it and create peace. Oh. Mm. And that is what I think is the flower soldier, the person who can be absolutely strong and has no fear of being tender as well. Right. Um, well, okay. Wait, wait. And, <laughs> and that's, that's a balance. That's balanced beautifully. Well, it totally is. So let's talk about the feminine and the challenge was stepping into that place because, you know, I used to work in corporate America and it was an unspoken call for you to be more yang than you were than you were yin, right? Be one of the guys and That's play right. along and right. ignore right. how badly they behave because right. And don't be to too, ahead. but don't be too aggressive. Don't be too assertive because then, oh, you, then you're no, 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 no. Because right. then you're a can we say it? Yes. The itch word. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. But here's the thing I want to ask you. What? What do you think the biggest challenge for women is to really step into that place to create that internal balance? The biggest challenge is that we haven't learned how to listen to our whole bodies. Mm -hmm. We have as many brain cells lining the cavity of our heart and lining the, our intestines as we do up here. And we privilege this and ignore this and this, which are, which are arguably the smarter parts of our brain. Um, <laughs> And I think for women, listening to our bodies, listening to our hearts, listening to our guts is so easily dismissed because you can't necessarily come up with chapter and verse in the moment about what the data is that this is coming from. Right. Um, and we get told to shut up as a result. Right. And, and we get told okay. that from the time we're really little. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I, I grew up in the same time frame as you. So I totally get that. And um, um, but I want to ask you about you personally. What what was the turning point, the pivot for you to become aware that you were out of sync, out of balance and that there was something needed for you to step into equilibrium? That's a great question. And I don't know that there was just one. I feel like it was kind of a cumulative impact. We lived in Washington, D.C. for 30 years. Um, it's an interesting place to live. <laughs> to but, say the but, <laughs> but again, not what you'd call family friendly. Mm. And um, But my kids wanted to be there. And when my youngest was a sophomore in college, the bank that my husband was working for got bought. And I just said, that's it. We're out of here. I need to be living surrounded by nature. I need to be living in a slower, quieter way. Because I can crank myself up all by myself, thank you kindly. I don't need this city going like this at me all the time. <laughs> and, um, and we moved to central Pennsylvania which is a place where I have ancestors going back a few hundred years, which is unusual for anybody in this country. Um, and um, I started to slow down. I started to just, when there's beauty out every window, it helps. Mm -hmm. yes. When you can walk in the woods and there's nobody around to hear you talking to the woods, it helps. Um, and again, it still took 
for me to have the language that I have now for that sense of balance, that took, you know, the crises of the last few years and watching people's struggles to find their voice and understanding how deeply what I will call the patriarchy, for lack of a better term, which I define as the Greco-Roman heritage layered on top of the Abrahamic faith, mm -hmm. all of which said women don't get a voice. Mm -hmm. All of those traditions conspire to say women don't get a voice. And when I started to see just how deep that struggle was, I understood something that I hadn't understood before. Speak the Truth and Point to Hope uses the Joseph Campbell hero's journey structure. And a lot of women had said to me, well, but doesn't that just apply to guys? And my answer had always been, no, I don't think so, because if you're not the hero in your own story, who is? Right. And yet, finally, I realized the other piece of it, which is that the hero's journey is built like the guys. The important bits are all exterior. Um, you know, they go out and they bring back Medusa's head, or they bring back the golden <laughs> fleece, or they, they do these big exterior moves. For women, for the yin journey, and I can't just say it's for women because I've had any number of male clients who've had a lot of these same struggles. It's an interior journey. That's right. The monsters we face are interior. It's all that ways that we've been swimming in the patriarchy for so long, we don't understand that it's poisoning our minds. Um, and our, what we bring back from our journeys is our voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we bring that back to the world, we also bring Mother Earth back to the world. Mm -hmm. We bring, we, I mean, when, if you look at who's in the big climate change demonstrations, this is just a fun activity, count the number of young women and young men. Mm -hmm. And the women are outnumbering the men like two to one, three to one, because right. they get, you know, that what we've done to the planet is what's been done to them. Right. Okay. So let me just ask you then. So tell me how. You know, because I, I loved when I was reading your stuff about, you know, mature leadership, that there are levels. So so that seems to fit with what you're talking about, because it's not just some mental acumen. There, there are different ways internally and externally that you become a mature leader. So yes. let's just talk a little bit about that. <laughs> OK, I say that there are four, I call them domains, you could call them whatever you want, um, in which we mature as human beings. And by the way, I, I'm very clear that whatever other purposes we all have in life, we are supposed to grow up. That is part of our purpose. <laughs> you know, that the good Lord, the great spirit, whatever you want to call it, put us here to be part of a maturing process. That is, that is, that's on each and every one of us. You can grow up, you can be mature physically, which is not the same as aging. It's a way you inhabit your body. It's a way you carry yourself. It's a presence you have. That's what a mature physical looks like. Mm -hmm. You can mature spiritually. You can be mature emotionally, and you can be mature intellectually. And mm -hmm. none of us can nail all four of those, or at least okay. very, very few, and I'm not one of them, so... Um, but we know, we can know ourselves well enough to know what we need to be working on. You know, right. do we need a more generous spirit? Do we need a better intellectual understanding of how the world is operating? Do we need a, um, closer connection to source, however you want to frame mm -hmm. that? Um, or do we need to be proud about the bodies we inhabit, whatever they look like, however they're shaped, and, and just 
reside in them in such a way that our dignity is impeccable. So, so those are all different ways that we can be right. mature. Well, you know, it's interesting because what I have found in my life is that I floated between those things, depending on what was happening in my life, where mm-hmm. I needed focus, where I needed um, to put my attention. And um, because, yeah, you don't, you don't, you know, stand in stellar places in all four areas, <laughs> but you, ca- but you can become aware of the fact that, that there, this part of you is calling for attention and enhancement. So I, I, I love that you're talking about that. And I, I, I think that anyone who's listening to this, you know, the journey, you know, I, you must become the heroine of your life. Right. So absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to know how people find you, by the way, <laughs> how do they find you? Um, well, they can find me through the website for the book, which is www.yinjourney, Y-I-N-J-O-U-R-N-E-Y.com. They can find me through smartworkco.com, C-O. Um, New Leaf is our independent publisher distributor. They can find, they can buy the book from the website. They can buy the ebook from the website. And Smashwords also has the ebook. Mm-hmm. So we have a number of different distribution mechanisms. I will say that I very deliberately chose not to put this on Amazon mm-hmm. because Amazon is younging up the world in so many <laughs> ways. I just, I couldn't figure out how to be in integrity and list my book on Amazon. And a lot of people are telling me I shot myself in the foot, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just going to go low and slow and build the readership yeah. for this. You have to trust your inner knowing. You know, Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's essential. So I... Um, I ask the same last question of every guest. Okay. And the question is, this show is called Women Awakening. What do you think is the one thing, the most important thing for women to know about the importance of their awakening? Their awakening is the seed of their journey. And it starts very, very often in a dark place. Mm-hmm. Seeds, seeds need to be put in a dark place in order to germinate. And, and if we're fighting that dark place and we see no value in it, we're slowing down our own awakening. The awakening is the journey. The journey is part of the awakening. They, they weave in and out together. And... I feel like the stuff we avoid, the stuff we're afraid of, the stuff we hide from, that's all the yin that we don't want to look at. And yet, if you can let go, you can rest there, you can heal there, you can grieve there, you can love there. It's the richest, most fertile part of ourselves. So all that stuff that feels so hard, bless it, because it's in many ways the best of you. Wow, that is incredible. Um, Ladies, I I hope if you didn't get all that, rewind and listen to it. (laughs) Um, And and I just want to say to you, Lisa, I so admire that from the time you were a child, you were someone who said, I'm an independent thinker and an independent soul. And you have continued to reveal that through your life. And for anyone listening, I want you to know it's okay if you're independent. It's okay if you want to do it differently. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Cynthia. This was lovely. And what a nice way to end. Thank you. (laughs) So ladies, you're welcome. Ladies, I'm going to say the same thing to you. I say every single week. Listen, you are a masterpiece. 
You are unfolding. You are here to do something grand and glorious that nobody else can do. And the call in this moment in time is to remind you to step up and step out and bring your gifts and bring your talents and bring your voice. This is the time that we are all necessary to change the whole dynamic so that humanity understands that love is the answer to every question. I am so grateful that you're here and I promise to see you soon. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) 